trouble, you better get ready. Bow to the masters. Break it down! What's up, guys? Kyle back here from the NVO blog. Glad to have you again for week three here on the blog. You might notice, number one, I'm by myself. Number two, I am not at a field. That is correct. Uh, no Remy this week. Still away. He'll be back, though. Um, and he actually might be back by the time you see this video. Um, but no him, so I decided we'll just make it simple, and we'll stay here today. So uh, welcome back to the blog. Thanks for joining us once again. Week two in the books, another pretty good one, um, highlighted again uh, by another Ansonian dominant victory. They uh, roll right over Woodland, 36 to six. Um, it was a great game for about 15 minutes. Defenses go toe to toe, um, and then Ansonia breaks through Arkel Newsom. You know, another excellent game, 196 yards and four touchdowns for the sophomore. He does a great job. The Ansoni defense, boy, what a job by them. Um, you know, all over the place, bringing pressure to Tanner Kingsley. He was never hit, but all of his throws were rushed. So a lot of credit goes to the Chargers. And after that one, that is the first time I've seen them this year. Uh, going to be tough for them to go down in this league. Um, some other things going on in Week 2. Uh, Seymour, 2-0. and So now we've got a couple of uh, undefeated teams atop the Brass Division. The Wildcats beat Sacred Heart 26-14 to at the stadium. Uh, not a clean game by any stretch of the imagination. Turnovers and penalties on both sides of the ball for both teams, um, but Seymour uh, able to come away with enough points. Luke Robowski and John Wilson both rushed for over 100 yards in that one. Um, so Seymour 2-0, and they break that 13-game losing streak by starting a two-game streak uh, of their own to start this season. And Sacred Heart, you know, back to the drawing board, but then we weren't sure what they would look like uh, without Rowan Eiffel. And, so far, not so good uh, for the Hearts, but they do have some time left, um, you know, to get things back together. Um, some other things: Brendan Litton, what a performance by him up in Torrington, uh, over 400 yards as part of Torrington state record performance. They rushed for 647 yards against Wolcott in a 66 to 28 win. Um, a new state record they beat by about 12 yards or 15 yards, I think. Um, so congratulations to the Raiders. They get back on track. We thought that was going to be a big game um, following the Ansonia loss to get back on track. They really do. Nine rushing touchdowns. Um, even Brenda Litton throws for a touchdown. So maybe a couple wrinkles in that Torrington offense uh, that we're finally getting to see here. So good job by the Raiders to get back uh, on top and even up at 1-1. One one. Uh, best game of the week, uh, Naugatuck over Derby uh, at the stadium on Saturday. That game was moved from Friday night. And boy, what a ball game this was. Derby um, never trailed until there was less than a minute left in the game. Jake Yorison, who was sick throughout the game, uh, he comes through two rushing touchdowns, throws a 35 yard pass on the last drive to Zach Mercer, who's the quarterback. A nice play in which uh, Yorison rolled out uh, on a run to the right and then pulled up to throw in Mercer. If you haven't seen the photo yet, the Rep Am had a great photo. My buddy Jim Shannon. Uh, took it and it is a phenomenal picture of Mercer uh, just sort of tipping it with one hand uh, and, and getting it in and next play Urison runs it in for a 14 to 13 win and Augitech's defense played a lot better than uh, I thought they would um, in addition uh, they only had four regular defensive starters playing in that game a lot of other injuries and whatnot going on with the Hounds so a great win for them uh, Rob Plasky said after the game you know that was one of his favorite victories of his career with uh, such a depleted squad so once those injuries heal which they're expecting to come back in the next couple of weeks uh, Nogi could be pretty dangerous here uh, coming through the middle of the season defending their NBL title in Derby um, you know Krieger still got his yards he had 249 yards in the air uh, one touchdown I think uh, maybe Derby was looking for a little more but you know credit Naugatuck for making uh, the stops and credit Derby's defense too they also played uh, a lot better than I think a lot of us uh, thought they might have in that game and uh, finally the uh, another one to highlight here Wilby shuts out Kennedy 36 to nothing uh, I think everyone expected a Wilby win but uh, the Wildcats have looked pretty good in their first two games. They're only 1-1, one and one, but they should have beat Lyman Hall, if not for that late fumble, and then really dominate Kennedy. They've got Jalen Mahan uh, and Jacob Thomas to run the ball. Both have rushed for over 100 yards in both of their first two games. Uh, so here's Wilby, you know, getting defensive, you know, pretty physical on both sides. They're very, very quick uh, along the line of scrimmage on defense especially. That is the one thing that really stuck out for me uh, watching that game. Um, and, of course, those two rushers, you know, that's pretty 
pretty nice mix that Wilby's got going there. Uh, Pat Russo doing a nice job with those guys, of course. Um, so Wilby one and one heading into uh, a, a pretty big game uh, this week. Uh, I was able to get out to four games. I saw Seymour, uh, Seymour Sacred Heart, and Sonia Torrington, or excuse me, and Sonia Woodland, uh, Noggy Derby, and Wilby Kennedy. So I think that's my single week record right there for, to go out to see games. Um, so not bad for me. Um, by the way, while I'm looking at this, I hope you like my Chuck Norris poster. Let me get my thumb over there. Right there, there's one, there's two, the Chuck Norris stacks. Maybe I'll share one later on. Anyway, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, my top 15 poll in the uh, the CSWA poll. Remy uh, will be casting his later on, so uh, we'll have to keep this a secret for the week. Uh, but mine, Masic stays on top with a big, big, a 50-point win. Uh, Masic with a, or excuse me, Xavier a 48 point win. So uh, those teams just keep on rolling. Uh, I moved Ansonia up to number three this week in my poll. They looked so so good against Woodland. That was like I said, the first time I got to see them this season. They looked excellent. That defense is going to be pretty hard to score on, I think, this year. Um, and of course, you got Arkell Newsom, um, you know, running the ball. I uh, dropped New Canaan down to four. They struggled a little bit in the first half of their game this week, but really picked it up uh, in the second half. So not a whole lot to be worried uh, there if you're the Rams. I keep Cheshire, Staples, Bunnell, five, six, seven. I move Hand up to number eight, Pomprog up to number nine, and Valley Regional up to number ten. Uh, those teams all playing pretty well, especially Pomprog, sort of out of nowhere. We weren't sure what they were going to have this year, and you know, all of a sudden they have played very, very well in their first two games with. Uh, an impressive win over Brookfield, which, by the way, lost a one-point game to Weston this week. Uh, not sure anyone saw that one coming. Um, and Valley Regional just continues to pile up the points. Uh, the defending Class S semifinalist there. Uh, my 11 through 15, I've got New London. Windsor, who's just throwing the ball all over the yard. North Haven struggled a little bit this week, but they are 2-0 and with two pretty tight wins. Uh, Norwich Free is 14, and West Haven is 15. Uh, final thing in this video before uh, we get moving along, our power rankings. Remy did send me his power rankings uh, from down the eastern seaboard. Uh, both of us actually have the same top four. We've got Ansonian, Naugatuck, Torrington, and Holy Cross one through four. I've got Woodland five, Remy's got Derby five. Uh, those teams don't play this season, so I guess we'll never know the real answer to that one. But uh, really, either way, you can go with that. Uh, Seymour, obviously, 2-0. Uh, they're a candidate to be down there. Wilby's playing well at 1-1. One one. Uh, so certainly, you really can't go wrong uh, with those teams at the bottom. Uh, so we're going to take our look at the um, our first week of real divisional play this season in the NBL. We'll take a look at that uh, in just a few minutes in our next video down below. Last week's predictions, I went 7-0. and I finally get a perfect week. I'm not sure if I can ever remember myself having a perfect week, so I'll hang my hat on that. Remy, 5-2 and last week, so I've taken a one-game lead over the defending champ, and uh, I'll hold that until the end of the weekend. Um, predictions tracker, hopefully I'll be able to get those games all scheduled in there pretty soon. Um, been real busy with everything lately, but I'll try my best for that. Um, quickly, divisional standings before we move on. Uh, Ansonia and Seymour are atop the brass division, both 2-0. and No division games yet. Uh, same thing in the copper. Uh, it's Torrington, excuse me, Naugatuck um, and Holy Cross are atop the division with 2-0 and records. Neither has played a divisional game yet. Uh, sort of big masses in the uh, middle of the divisions. Wilby, uh, Seymour, Watertown, or excuse me, Wilby, uh, Watertown, uh, Crosby, and Derby all one and one. Um, and Wolcott actually too uh, in the brass. And in the copper, you've got Woodland at one and one. Uh, you've got Torrington at one and one. And then the bottom, uh, the copper with Sacred Heart, Kennedy, and St. Paul. Neither of those uh, three teams have looked especially good so far. And playoff standings are really early yet, but if you do want to check them out, they're always updated down in the right sidebar. I should probably point this way. Um, so make sure you check those out. Those are updated after every game day uh, in the state. Um, so that'll do it for our week two review. We will move on to week three with our previews and predictions coming up, so make sure you check out that video right down here. All right, once again, thank you folks for joining us. And if you're going to take a break, uh, grab yourself a water or a slice of pizza or a bag of chips or something uh, and come back and watch video number two. Take care, guys.